Welcome back to another episode of the Knife Nuts Podcast, where we are joined with the Fiber Smith, Mr. Matt Diskin. Yay! Honestly, I think we wanted to have you on for since we started this podcast. Well, I appreciate it. I've enjoyed almost every episode. <laughs> what do you mean almost? Almost. <laughs> well, yeah. Bullshit. There's some, you know. You know, if this is one of those things like I think where a lot of people may not know who you are or have not handled your knives. They probably handled something that you've had something to do with. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So this is, could be one of those things, you know, Aaron Frederick's been on here and now <laughs> now he's he's soaring high. And uh, <laughs> Matt Diskin, you've always been like a behind the scenes type of guy. And now now this is your coming out party. Oh, I hope. Oh, <laughs> hosted by the Knife Nuts podcast. That's right. In 2018 form, he's coming out as straight. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's disappointed. I prefer it in the closet. Thank you. All right. How we we won't try to give you too much publicity then. Yeah. How do you keep all that machinery in there? Anyway, <laughs> uh, where are we fun. going with this? I like there are so many things that our, our listeners wanted to ask you and that sort of thing, but okay. I figured we'd start with like, How's everybody doing? How's everyone doing? It's, let me tell you, this, it's been a royal pain in the ass to get us all into one place again. Yeah, we're never going to hit that two-week mark ever again, guys. Sorry. It's just, yeah. it's just not happening. We try to fill that space with, like, other stuff. You know, we do the YouTube thing. We tried that. It was fun. Yeah, we should do that more often. So maybe look forward to more live streams on our YouTube channel which is what knife nuts podcast extras no i actually i actually changed it for brand continuity it's now just knife nuts podcast okay that was a good move so yeah knife nuts podcast on youtube i think we're gonna do live streams more often yes and po and like instagram and things like that yeah yeah so jake what have you been up to man uh well i graduated this weekend and and that pretty much consumed me since the last episode jake is uh, now a he's a master now yeah yes and now that i go by master master jake i uh, uh i basically the got home coming, don't worry yeah i got i got home and started uh working on my workshop and i just finished a workbench it took almost a week because of the still being a full-time uh Stay at home dad thing. But, but that's it. Whatever happened oh, to the knife no, 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 you're no. working on? No, no, no. There's another amazing <laughs> thing happened recently. Uh, <laughs> someone sent me a broken knife that was perfectly good. Uh, oh, yeah. Do, do we really want to get into that? And for the brand, I would have to say probably the best factory D10 I've ever felt. We'll talk about no. that later because that's like a whole spiel. Yeah, I, I have. A, I very much disagree with that, but we'll get into that. Oh, I can't wait for you to see what I've done. What What happened to the uh, the knife you were working on, the one that we didn't stop hearing about for three weeks straight? Oh, oh well, the I brought it to the Lehigh. I I, I got it quote unquote done as quickly as I could. He we left it there. To get it to the Lehigh show and and uh, showed our friends there, and it's just been in the case that I bought at the Lehigh show ever since. I'm calling it done. I was, used it a few times. It's got some scratches in the uh, hand rub. I'm I'm proud of that. That was pretty anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll do I'll do something with it. We, I mean, there was a lot of work in progress and not a lot of finish. Well, I'm <laughs> used to, I'm used to this. I'm used to this. I will no. I'll I'll I will go back and and uh, I'll take some finished photos and then I'll uh, listen to that bong rip and then uh, I'll I'll cut like a. a Frying pan and half food or something. But I mean, you know what he won't do is make a second one. <laughs> oh no! Just believe me. If if I had if I didn't need this uh, this workbench and and reorganization down here, uh, I would have already cut out something that would have been for Levon. But with that attitude, it's going to go to fucking Dave instead. <laughs> well, well now. in that case, I'll just I'll just uh, I'll do a little more. How many times have you reorganized that basement? Uh, since 2009, um, 74, one, it, it has, it has gone through one complete reorganization for every personality I've had. Uh, so 74. So an yeah. average of four per year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm a, I'm a seasonal being. 
Anyway, uh, Dave, how are you? I'm good. I got into a bunch of new stuff, which we can talk about later, so that's actually kind of exciting. Me too. It's kind of been a whirlwind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. And Brian, uh, we had the opportunity to handle the micro typhoons. Yep. What'd you and think? I love them. Awesome. I love them. And I'm so glad that you decided that. I mean, I know that's how you design them to have your detent. And then they just like were like, well, uh, maybe you should try ones with a ceramic detent. Oh, my God. Is that a Chinese accent now? No, it was just oh. it was just an accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, that was just me talking like this. Um, yeah, I'm, I was. It was kind of weird that they sent three of them with that deep with the with um, the ball detent method. And it, um, this better. I don't know why. It's a better better detent. You know, if they set up to make the one God insert, you figure they unless they went through all the inserts trying to get it right. Well, the the thing that amazed me is so they they've been making arguably very good knives with ball detents for whatever a couple a few years now this was their first attempt at your detent and from the ones they sent the one with your detent was better than what Easily. they're than what they're used to doing and that's Easily. what i was surprised about. i thought it would take them you know at least a couple tries or something to make it better than what they're, they're well he gave to. them the specs to machine yeah they just all they had to do is print it out dude when it's you... so it's so good it was so much better than the than the ceramic ball i it's, it's um, night and day yeah, pleasant, very See, pleasantly surprised. I thought their ball. I thought the ball method was. Re they do really well as at it. As far as obviously they need a ramp. Goes, not bad. Yeah, it needs they, a detent ramp. They need a ramp. I understand that, but other than that, I thought it was really good. They, truthfully, they are stellar. I, I mean, Riot does produce some amazing stuff. Uh, I'm glad you got to see that firsthand, Brian, because we've been trying to tell you that for a long time. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, welcome yeah. to the dark side, <laughs> Matt. You're going there next, aren't you? Oh wait, you've been there for a, a while. You've been on that dark side. Of, yeah, maybe people don't I, people don't even know that. Years. Yes. I have a Kaiser that has your name on it, so you're definitely on the dark side. My first uh, Taiwanese product was shit 17 years ago. You did those. Uh, you know what's ones that I I like that you've designed that not only a lot of people know about is the Vulcan stuff. Yeah. And there was one before that. It was uh, a collab with Butch Valentin called the VND. VND? I don't wow. think I can picture that. I do not remember that. Or never we heard did of it. that for probably 10 years. Is it, Was that an auto? Yeah, a double action auto. Oh, no I should, release. That's awesome. Talk about it under the radar. Yeah, yeah. seriously. We preceded all the Lone Wolf stuff. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Funny thing, we had a meeting with like, the president of Lone Wolf before they came out with their scale release to see if they kind of wanted to distribute our VND. We were just getting started. We had all the manufacturing set up, and we were just getting product in. And they had a lot more ability to really make the thing fly. Um, but they turned us down and then came out with their Lobo a month hmm. or two later. I can't even picture this knife. We'll have to do some research and put that. Yeah, in yeah, definitely. I've never heard of it. But Lone Wolf is gone now, right? Yeah, They're I don't think Lone gone. Wolf. Yeah, yeah. is a thing. Sucked up by Benchmade. Yeah. Oh, Sucked that makes up sense. And destroyed by Benchmade. Yeah, I was gonna say they, they bought them up, but then they also folded the brand after a while. Yeah. Were they actual competition to Benchmade? Because you don't see that too many no. too many acquisitions in the knife industry anymore. So it was uh, a guy named Jim Weir who came through Gerber, I believe, and started this his company, Lone Wolf. And they did, uh, you know, they did actually make stuff stateside and, and had a pretty good run at it. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I'll be he, damned. He sold out to Benchmade and went to work for him for a year or two and don't know where he's at anymore. But no. Benchmade, Benchmade just absorbed it and came out with a few like hunting knife models based around brand. those designs. And yeah. and guess where you can still see and handle both versions as new old stock. Country knives. Country knives. Yeah, they have like <laughs> one of everything still. They definitely do. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, Matt, yeah. can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and why everyone should care? Tell tell us more than a little. Start start tell from us the beginning. Tell, tell, us the beginning. A, tell us a story. Oh well, back in '56. We that might be too far back. Way. That might be too far back. 
No, I'm just kidding. I uh, I got started making knives in my late teens, early 20s. I was going to school in San Jose, living in a city called Santa Cruz, which was a surf town, California. And I was in uh, engineering school at San Jose State. A lot of it was really based on, you know, silicon chip manufacturing. Oh. It, was, it was in the heart of that area. That's right. I think that's right. I remember you telling me that when you were here, I guess that was so six months I, ago uh, now. I was in a program called Systems Engineering, where we did robotics and uh, cell manufacturing, uh, very early CNC stuff, and uh, also <clears throat> conventional machining as well. But it was all integrated primarily towards, you know, big chip manufacturers. And uh, the, at the time I was there, all the chips kept shrinking. So you were in knife making before you even went to engineering school. So you were making knives uh, before that. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit before and then just crudely, very crudely. And then the engineering school actually brought a lot of skills to the table as far as learning how to really machine stuff and uh, learned AutoCAD 10 and then 12. This was before even really CAM existed. Hmm. So the first programming we did was just raw G code, um, where you're writing out the lines of letters and numbers. Yeah. All the Cartesian coordinates. Just um, alphabet soup. They're not actually looking at anything. Yeah. It's nice though now because I can still, I can get into a program and see what's going on and change it on the fly. I think a lot of people who learn a current CAM program, they don't really dictate their tool pass or know a whole lot about, certainly they can't go into the G code and, and change a dimension. You're like, you're like a knife hacker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, that's true. I mean, you've been in the, that, the technology side of things for quite a while. And yeah. you applied that through all your, I mean, you went into the art knife thing for a long time. So when did yeah. they, when did the two things sort of merge? Well, I first, my first big project was a double action dagger. Actually, I, I should go back a little while. I was, I was living in Santa Cruz making pretty crude knives. And I called up Butch Valentin. Wow. And amazingly, he said, why don't you come on by next time you drive through and spend a couple days and we'll teach you how to make a, a switchblade. So the first two days I, I you know, spent with his son, Rainey, and we actually went through and made a liner lock folder and turned it into a double action auto, hmm. the button release. And that really got everything started. Um, from then I, I, I did a short batch. It was a couple hundred uh, knives on a, it was called the fishtail dagger. I remember seeing it was like a liner lock, yeah, uh, uh, a smooth handle, like all design, solid titanium handle, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, pearl button, uh, thumb studs, dagger. I did, I did those for a couple of years. Uh, when when about was this? Just for the sake of uh... right before the turn of the century. All right, yeah. So we're still going back, you yeah. know, quite a Maybe. while. I probably finished them up in 2003. Wow. Five. Um, and then from there, uh, Bush and I did our Taiwanese collaboration. And uh, it was a product that was manufactured in, in Taiwan? Well, we actually made three of the parts to bring them in. We brought them in, they're, they're not autos at all. And we added the parts that converted them into autos. Gotcha. Kind of our way of skating around the law. Um, and did you have any interest in doing like the double action stuff, or was that just a coincidence of no? I was of going uh, under the wing of uh, even before I started making knives, I was going to uh, all these little shows that they had around Northern California, and I was a collector. Right. Some of the stuff that really sparked was that really early Benchmade stuff. They did a. Walter Brand and a CQC mm -hmm. and uh, Bogazuski Spike, which was an auto. Um, and that really sparked my interest. And then when I first got got my first 
Microtech, which was a Halo one. I was already making autos by then, but that really showed me, you know, what you could do with them. They weren't just cheap shit you bought in Tijuana. No, Microtech really was ahead of the game back then, man. Like, yeah, it's crazy when you think about it. And Butch had a lot to do with his first stuff. Too. I believe that. I mean, for those who don't know, the Valatons are like a like knife royalty, wouldn't you say? Just that whole family. They sure were. Certainly yeah. along the West Coast. There was uh, there was really several schools of switchblade making when there was a custom switchblade market. Um, it was really strong in the you know, early, I don't know, two thousand seven, two thousand ten. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of people on the East Coast that had got been taught by Bill McHenry. Uh, even people like Hinderer, he came through that. Wow. Uh, the McHenry, his son, his son-in-law, uh, Jason Williams, and but it, the market completely tanked. A lot of for, these guys for autos. hear about for these really high-end custom autos. Mm-hmm. They were getting into the you know, incredible five, seven K range on some of them. Wow. And, and uh, this is like before, like a lot of the, the, the tactical stuff started with the, with fast fairly, opening, non-assisted yeah, knives. No, no flippers at that point. Sure. Um, but a lot of these guys that were really high end, you, you've never even heard of cause they're long gone mm-hmm. <clears throat> on the West coast. There was a whole school that Butch had taught his family as well as people like myself and other people like uh the touch bill touch came along a little later um so there was a whole east coast west coast and then in between there were a few little people few little patches of people making autos Um, sure and it was all kind of dictated by their mechanisms um the there was a texas guy the guy in texas named um, Mike Whiskers Allen mm-hmm. and he did sort of a scale release that was a single action um, lock back and a lot of people so it was, a, it was a lock back and a scale release a scale release the back scale would right would, would, would shift sort of over just, and be yeah. the, the trigger right yeah it just had a, a notch locked open and a notch locked closed I see what you're saying there's so a the there's a pro tech the, production version yeah, yeah. gotcha and he, he taught quite a few people how to make them. Um, oh, that's right. It's like a new one. They do it. It's called the Whisker, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there wasn't a whole, it wasn't nearly as, as broad as the flipper market is now. Sure. With, with how many people made them. I feel like I've seen a small resurgence in in the auto world, though, too. Well, I think that people are looking for something new. Well, the idea that, I mean, the fact that you can carry an, an automatic knife in California, as long as it meets the, the yeah. blade length limit, is, is hilarious to me. Because here in Pennsylvania, I'm still not allowed to carry them. There's a lot of states, though. I think it's over 40 states now. That are starting to uh, make it uh, legal. At least, at least legal to possess. Yeah, I mean, even here, like, it's still a gray area. Like, somebody asks me all the time, it's like, no cop in the world is going to stop you for carrying that unless you're already doing some shady ass shit. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't really think it's like, you know, there are some flippers that have that certainly open faster than a lot of my autos, but yeah, go figure, you know, go figure. Well, I think uh, that that negates a lot of the auto market is why would you need something like that? Sure. Something when the flippers are, are pretty much equally as fast i mean i'm still there's still a, an an idea of novelty about it especially when you get into the higher end stuff like yeah you know where we're any of any of us are like we're always looking for something interesting and different well yeah there's you such know. a stagnation in creativity sure and you've but the knife world that's something i can say like i mean talking about your your current custom work there's really nothing like it i can't think of anything specifically that really reminds me of a a matte disc and designer or, or, uh, or, or mechanism for that matter. Like the stuff that you're doing with the wheel and what's the new one, the newer one called the one with the bolster uh, revolution, the revolution. I, those things are sweet, man. Um, yeah. 
what's your thought process when you when you tackle these knives now? Because you don't make a lot of knives. I mean, I guess in the long run, uh, no. you kind of you pick and choose when when to come to market with these things. Not that you yeah. don't have a lot of other stuff to keep you busy, <laughs> and we'll talk about that. That's it, and I don't. I don't particularly love doing all the processes of making knives anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I try and make some for the shows. Sure. You know, got 12 days until Atlanta. So I'm looking forward to it. What are you bringing with you? Oh, so far I've just shit in my pants. So that's where we've gotten to. <laughs> Good. You know, just th throw it. Just yeah, these are the pants I shit in and just throw yeah, them right on top of the exactly. table. Exactly. The big Someone will probably buy them. I didn't get anything done, but I did shit in my pants. So, well, no, that's good. It's, it's, I got twenty knives I'm working on. We'll see if any of them get done. I know the feeling. And yeah. <laughs> so wheels and revolutions, or just uh, revolutions? Mostly revolutions. I still want a wheel, man. Uh, I don't know why. I'll probably want a revolution when I see it. So, there's that. I still yeah. want a fire. That's like probably one of my favorite knife designs of the modern era is the is the fire. Yeah, that's a really fantastic one. Yeah, that that was on my uh, gift list well before we ever uh, met Matt or or even John Gray actually. And I'm sure, like now that I've told, now that I've said that on the podcast, I'm going to get inundated with. Uh, with <laughs> offers. offers for with hey i got a met disc and fire you want to buy it and i'm gonna be like yeah kind of are there that many out there there's I made a, a lot of them really they're definitely more accessible than you would imagine the, the rarity is amazing because i made 500 of them oh wow shit. what really yeah damn wow. that's because they're actually made in china over a several year period <laughs> yeah i didn't realize yeah. that uh, I remember there was like the the fancier ones with the compound grinds. I figured there weren't many yeah. of those, but the regular ones. Okay, wow. There was still What's... 100 of the compound ground ones. Yeah, because I feel feel like the one all the ones I see recently are all compound ground, unless yeah. it's all the same one every single time. Uh, it probably is the same one, just like moving its way around the market as these things <laughs> yeah. happen. The rest Everyone of the money. else threw theirs away. Um, you've also done a lot of collaborations too. I know you you work with John Gray a lot. You guys go way back. Um, yeah. Um, What's that relationship I like? I mean, I know what it's like, but you should tell. He's warm her. and cuddly. He's so he, big. He is so big. He's <clears throat> like, he's like the the, uh, you know how like in school maybe in second grade or something there was like a class pet or like a stuffed animal or something that you got to like take home and you had to take it home for a weekend. That's John. That's John <laughs> for the knife industry. It's a very specific <laughs> but vivid image. So like like in second grade we had this like stuffed dog that was called Snickers, and you, and and everybody had to like put their name in a hat, and you had to like that person who got picked out of the hat got to take Snickers home for the weekend, and you had to like write it was it was such a trick to get you to do more freaking homework because you had to like write like a paragraph about what you did with Snickers that week. I feel like that's something we should do now with John Gray. Anyone who spends some time with John Gray has to write like a paragraph about what they've done with John Gray and why it's affected Ew. their life, and, and then take him home for the weekend. Well, no, this is that's after they've taken him home for the weekend. <laughs> I'm not sure I could write it publicly. <laughs> you could, but it would just be one long swear word. Oh, yeah. really? Not put me in a good light. So. I don't know. I mean, so I feel like it once you know once. John decides to pass the torch. You're the next Snickers. <laughs> just pe I think people just need to find out about it. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> so you make knives, and obviously you don't do it that often. You said you're, you know, you're, you're, you have a love-hate relationship with the process. Um, yeah. Obviously, you still like knives because you still like going to shows. You still, in, you still create some really awesome stuff. But you also have the Fibersmith. Could you tell us what that's about? Oh, okay. So I did not start out in the composite industry. I started out as a knife maker. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in school, I did take some material engineering classes where I learned the processes and learned about it. But uh, I, really I should preface with... this because jumping right into like, you know, blah, 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 composite. Matt manufactures freaking carbon fiber 
for tons of companies, tons of industries, and pretty much every knife on the market, I would imagine, at this point. <laughs> there is a lot of competition these days. Mm. So, But it's been a pretty good run. I uh, What happened is we had... Uh, we've got... Uh, Boeing is located up here. Mm-hmm. Big aerospace manufacturer. And Boeing, used, I've never heard of it. Yeah. Just, oh, <laughs> and they, they used to have a store here called the Boeing Surplus Store, where they basically took all their garbage, would sort it out, and then you could go buy whatever it was. It was a, it was a crazy place for a gearhead or, you know, and even knife makers. So in the beginning, I was buying a lot of titanium and reselling it to knife makers. And I had stumbled upon a few rolls of uh, raw fabric that I had laid up and, you know, sold it and used some. And then I, I developed a relationship with a guy there who was the head of reclamation. And he made it so I was able to actually purchase a giant quantity of out of date pre-preg material wow and what what pre-preg for anybody who doesn't know is it's got the resin already impregnated into the fibers of the fabric so it's it's uh basically sticky at room temperature that's what she said and uh it has it has two layers of plastic in between it to keep it from sticking together now this is the stuff that's used in aerospace a lot of high-end automotive yeah Stuff, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. It, the process takes usually an autoclave, which is a big pressure vessel to, to laminate the stuff. I got a pressure vessel for you. <laughs> and Sorry, it, I got to stop. Like, this is stupid. It, Continue. Uh, the material needs to be uh, stored in cold storage, frozen. Otherwise, the resin has a chance to set off. So does that mean you have, like, cryogenic chambers at your disposal? No, I just have a giant freezer that I pay for. <laughs> that makes sense. All right. So it's not quite cryogenic. It's only, you know. You couldn't freeze negative, a human. Negative 10. That's there. what we'll do with John Gray. We'll, we'll, pass, <laughs> we'll pass Snickers to the next generation. <laughs> the yes. frozen version. Yes. John so Sick. I ended up, actually the first stuff I bought was 30 rolls and... I brought it home and I'm like, what the fuck? It's got this bronze wire in it. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and it turned out it was 30 rolls of lightning strike. Right. But it wasn't called lightning strike at the no, time. No, not right? really. There, uh, Todd Begg had gotten a hold of some a few years earlier from somebody and it used it and had called it lightning strike. But even in industry, it's just called strike protection. So it's just added, um, like, impact resistance? Is that what it's no, supposed to do? It it dissipates the electrons when ah, it gets hit by light. It's conductivity stuff. Yeah, so they'll put it over the, the last layer of uh, whatever they're making. That's why it's called lightning strike, because yep. lightning can strike it. Yeah. If, if <laughs> it never really, that never stood out to me. It's, uh, and shut it's, up, everybody else. You guys didn't know that either. Uh, no, I, I mean, it makes a lot more sense. I thought it was just like a decorative thing. Jake's going to pretend oh, he knew yeah. that all along. Only <laughs> only because that's what you would do in any other circumstance. Oh, shut up. It's, it's a conductive material on its own, carbon fiber. Yes, I've shorted I've shorted myself uh, yeah. out of a battery before on, my, uh, on one of my race drones. Race so if, if it gets hit by lightning, it's going to basically blow a hole. Looks like if it got hit by a big shotgun or something. Wow. Um, and what the lightning strike does is it spreads all the energy across the whole surface of it. And they don't even use it anymore. They use basically just a wire mesh on top of it. It was too expensive to weave it into the carbon fiber. So it uh, it got adapted in the knife world, you know, took to it pretty well. And I, I'm pretty much out of it now. I got a little bit for the blade show. Does anyone have it? I feel like it There's, had a real there peak. There are other people making it who had oh, okay. uh, dry material, and then they had it woven with a wire in it. Okay, because I feel like it had its re- its peak a couple of years ago, and it's really much yeah, rarer now. It sure is. It seems that way with all these materials, especially the real 
flashy shit. It's got like a lifespan, all of it. And then it's just played out real quick. What do you think what do you think is the next material to get really played out? Oof. Well, I'm already seeing it with the marble. The marble carbon fiber? Yeah, there's quite a few people making it. What's funny is I kind of like like that to, I like that more than the weave. Like to me, like the weave, at least from on a knife where, where it's mostly decorative. Like Yeah. You know, it doesn't need that that weave to maintain its structural rigidity at no, that point. No, no, it's there's no purpose in it, and that's all the marble is is decorative. Right. So the the only industry I sell it to is the knife world. Right. I, I would imagine it doesn't have much use other than that. No, and there's companies that are doing similar stuff. Lamborghini is doing all their seats. I saw some of the interior trim on there. Yeah. It's either like they do it in like a fat weave or they do it like with that marble carbon yeah. fiber. Now I saw that. They call it forged. Which is um, kind of a silly name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> who's going to argue with them? Right. Mean. It's This is forged carbon fiber. Whatever. The There's a, a one that I just saw that I had never seen before, and it actually re- piqued my interest. Called Jelly Roll. Have you seen that? I saw that yeah, <laughs> I have not seen this. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I have not. I hadn't gotten excited about a new. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Weave actually. in a while, but that one looks really, really different he's, and he's, cool. uh, and useless as far as uh, st- structural integrity. How could that oh, yeah. possibly help? <laughs> um, the one that uh, that I have on my Hydra is that pearl carbon fiber. I don't really know. It looks like it's made of a bunch of different smudges. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's it's an interesting look. So like, I don't know. Like OSB kind of? I, I guess. I'll send you a picture. You'll see it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you. it's not like you only sell that stuff to the uh, to the knife industry. Like, I mean, hasn't don't you, isn't NASA one of your clients sometimes? No, actually, no, not NASA. Oh, sorry. Boeing is. Boeing. So you supply an aerospace company. I I, that's it's interesting. I was, you're probably better off with Boeing. They're probably better funded than NASA. Yeah, but they uh, are hard to collect money from. Really? Yeah. They're, oh. they're net 90. They're so parents. Boeing is the brass knives of the uh, <laughs> blades Uh-oh. of the aerospace world? Uh-oh. <laughs> I think that's doing brass a little justice justice oh snap damn yeah matt throwing the cold shoulder <laughs> take that what's he gonna do when he sees us at blade show <laughs> presumably us. presumably say nothing because you can't refute things yeah. that are true <laughs> the truth. that's true seems to um, be a lot of deception going on i mean at this point no one cares where it's made just be honest yeah. about it like why do you have to be a dick yeah. yeah. <sighs> Makes no sense. Um, so how about with the, the new models? Are there any plans for any production versions of the wheel or anything? I mean, the dual, the double action stuff's a little harder to, uh, yeah. I guess, to, to sell, but, you know. Um, I'm not sure. I'm doing some designing for uh, some big companies. So mm-hmm. there's some stuff coming out there. But... I don't know. I, I'm actually thinking about my next project's probably going to be out the front. Oh no! Ooh. Ooh, that's a that's some dangerous waters to tread in. <laughs> I mean, you, Tony's going to get pissed. <laughs> I mean, what's Gavin going to say? Gavin knows all about it. I'm sure he does. Yes. Tony is Tony's a very long time friend of mine. So I want. I really want to get Tony on this show. We'll cross that bridge. Do you, do you think he do you think he would uh, do the do the podcast? I don't know. We're gonna have to ask him at uh, at Blade mm-hmm. Show. See if we can get we could, Tony. We could have Gavin um, tell Tony about the pipes in your uh, basement. <laughs> that might pique his interest. Look, it was the Gorilla Glue. Okay. <laughs> There's definitely a story I'm missing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah because you didn't come to Knife Party 2017. Which was like the New York New York show after party, which ended up what that next day? I can't remember. Yeah, three some, three some, hours away in the next day. Three hours yeah, away in the next day. Worth it, wasn't it? I, I thought was, it was a good. It was a good time. Oh, it was amazing. 
Um, yeah, but uh, that should be an interesting interaction. I'm going to be like, what's up, Mr. Marfione? I'm going to say it just like that. It's like, how do you feel about going on a podcast? Maybe you know uh, my my friend here, Mr. Diskin. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Swing that podcast dick around, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it still no, hasn't have, hit, but... I have tons of respect for Tony. Oh, yeah. Time. You know, there's some real unfortunate shit that comes along with success. Sure. But, uh, yeah. And it makes for good podcast talk. It but at makes the end, for great fodder. Yes. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's done a lot for the industry. Yeah. Um, so, going forward, uh, so... The the what's the one that came out through Kaiser, Dave? That you have the Toro. That's been a very that Toro has been a very Toro. popular design. And you know what's crazy, man? Like, and you won't even. I don't think you're going to be upset with me for saying this because you know how John has one of the original Toros, one of your uh, customs. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt that side by side from the to the Kaiser. Yeah, and scary. It, the difference is barely there. It's crazy how how accurate that knife is. Well, it, it is. It's real frightening. I'm uh, I'm real leery about what what the market's doing right now. It's 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 a tough one. Um, I feel like the way Brian is doing it by issuing a design that he's never going to actually make makes a lot of sense. I, I think it's a but it's still a, a, a from a business perspective. It's it's still up in the air. I hate giving them so much power. That's true. The only thing that I think that is working in in everyone's favor now is that the competition there is getting so well, heated. If we decide to shut down their OEM work, you know, how many people does that put out of business? Mm. Yeah, there's a ton of people who just contract them to make knives. Yeah, there'd be a lot of people yeah. without jobs. Well, a it's lot of people without their own be- business. It'd be funny to see all the custom guys who make their own custom knives yeah. who, who can't go all of a sudden well, yeah, can't and that's compete. the thing. They don't have the skills to actually do it themselves. Yeah. But that's so all 100% sure. true, but what you guys have to understand is, like, behind we, there's another four companies ready to take those orders and can probably build them. Uh, or even if they can't build them the way that we is now, give them another two months. Yeah, but they also they need business. that sort of front-facing business in the United States and Europe and we has that yeah. down pretty well. They can interface <laughs> that's, with people that's very true. easily. That's true. Hey, Jake, what were the names of those two uh, Chinese companies that are now on the scene? Are you expecting me to say something racist right now? Like what? No. Didn't you find two <laughs> other brands of of knives, or were you just? Oh, oh my! Oh no, no, no! You are you talking about the list of uh, amazingly hysterical Chinese brand names? Yeah, like yeah. Fairy okay. Will. Fairy will. Yeah, those aren't necessarily knives, but just Aww. incredible brand. Name. I I think what they do is just that they have like a generator that picks two random two American Western words. Sounding, yeah. Yes. And they just go. They just hit it and they go with it. They're We've like, talked about the Western name generator. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> how else would you have gotten Tucson? Tucson. Yeah. Tucson. Tucson night morning. Night uh, morning. Hand cheese. Green thorn. Oh my yeah. god. Well, that's actually not that bad. Kevin John. Kevin John <laughs> is to this day. It just sounds like a clothing line. One. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin John by Kevin John. <laughs> Matt, I have a yeah. question about the uh the Toro actually and the original design. So. Why isn't the detent stronger? No, it's very strong. Uh <laughs> the double detent on it. Is yeah. it supposed to have a it hole drilled detent, on both sides of the blade? So that both no. See, okay, so Kaiser did that wrong, right? So there's only supposed to be the dimple on the presentation side. Yeah, okay, that's what the I thought. Lock side, the lock side actually wasn't supposed to be a detent. And the reason for that is you can actually grip the knife. Yeah. And flip it still. Ah. Uh, yeah, and it won't, it won't add any pressure. Friction. Um, yeah. Okay, so they just did, they, they, that got lost in translation at some point? With- no. I made it fairly specific to them, but they they couldn't nail the detent from the top side. Ah. Because there's no through hole. Okay. So it's like a blind fit. I'm guessing this was their reasoning. I was able to do it. <laughs> yeah, because I have one, and it's, it's a very um, intense detent. And it's also 
it so makes it, it a little it, interesting closing the blade. Yeah, I mean, they got it killed it basically. <laughs> Killed the product before I, it even got a chance. I wouldn't say that. I mean, it's still nice. It's I, I like it a lot. It's it's well executed in every other regard. But yeah, it was a. It didn't feel like it was supposed to be that way. No, made way too much uh, pressure on it too. Yeah, uh, you know what? It seems like you're the third knife maker who said that Kaiser has sort of made random changes that they didn't ask for. Oh yeah, not surprising. They. So uh, another reason for doing that, and certainly uh, Kershaw's used it on a couple things, mm -hmm. and they they got it was you can tune it. Yeah. So so you can tune the lock back soft enough to where it's a good lock, but you don't have to worry about it being a flipper detent. And then on the other side, you can crank that detent down really far and make it as strong of a flipper detent as you want. Yeah, what's the um, model you have with with Kershaw? I, I got one for my girlfriend. It's excellent. The flipping action, like he's, he's got a couple uh, right now. He's strobe. got strobe. There's a strobe. And yeah, then the strobe was. A, oh, I bought her both. Yeah, the strobe and then the most recent one, the the Warren Cliff one. Cliff. Yeah, the so, strobe was a really pleasant surprise. Yeah, the strobe flips so well. I think I think that was the first non-assisted Kershaw that actually worked. Yes, that's correct. It was. It came out at the same time as the Nuru, and the Nuru kind of sucked. Dude, that thing, I was like, wow, that's a great design. You know, Sinkovich design. Yeah, it was like it just, didn't flip, which is crazy. They were made in the same factory. Yeah, I, I bought one. I bought another one of those as well. My girlfriend has all these, and yeah, that one's fucking terrible. It's amazing she has all these Diskin designs and still doesn't have a name. Name. Yeah. <laughs> what I, I mean, okay, Liz. Yeah, so Liz has all of these. But yeah, the, the that Sinkovich one, they did so terribly. So clearly, it's not just manufacturing. It was your design that was superior. Uh, Oddly I, enough. I, I wouldn't say that. Well. <laughs> Christine uses a Nora as well, which is really weird. Yeah, it's, it's I don't know. I mean, like, here, take uh, this. They were, they were what they were. You know, they're $20 knives that... They're were, were that, overly heavy, and that's why know, the strobe was such a pleasant surprise. Yeah, sure. I got I got them both at the same time, and I was like, and I opened the strobe first, and I was like, wow, this is awesome. And then I opened the Nora, I was like, Jesus Christ! Yeah, why? it's it's crazy how they can be made from the same OEM and be wildly different. Yeah, I swore they had to be made in different factories. Yeah, and they might. Have we'll never know anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's the Chinese OEM making shitty knives, yeah. so it could be any of them. Um. I mean, speaking of, like, their newer stuff, though, like, Kershaw's latest uh, oh, bearing yeah. bearing flippers, they're great. Yeah. yeah. They've really they're... adopted it. There's There were more of those than Speed Safes released this year. Yeah, and, and there's more still to come, so yeah. we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, every, everything's out except the one I want. Yeah, Damn. The, the one that everybody wants, Jake. Oh, those yeah, the, nat the Natrixes? The one in copper. Just, That's the, the one he wants. One. All the other ones are out, I think. Just, just my copper one. I, the that... non, the non-assisted ones aren't out yet. I don't think. What's yeah. funny is okay. that Jake You're always insists. Insist, Jake always insists that I'm a, I'm like a copper whore. Like everything I like is copper. My pipes, everything. And mm -hmm. and you've admitted to that. So whatever you're about to say is stupid. Well, <laughs> now he's now he's laid claim to the copper knife. So it's it's interesting that he does that because he also kind of relives his life vicariously through the knives that I buy because he actually thought his first most nostalgic ZT was his ZT, but it was actually mine. <laughs> yeah. So you know how ZT recently um, released? What's the, I don't even know what the model is. I have one coming by the way, Jake. It's, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just the new one that looks like an old one. The new one with the stripes. Think of it. The 0095. No, not the new, the no, zero, no. Yeah, it looks like a. It's an in-house no, design. It's the not the new Sinkovich thing. The new. Archie. We'll talk about that in a minute. No, there's no name <laughs> attached to this one. It's guys. The, it's the fucking zero zero nine five. It's zero zero nine five. Yes. Jesus, Dave. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, which that knife never interested me at all until they put fucking stripes on the blade. Well, that's because the the first one that came out was a was a Russian, Russian exclusive. exclusive. Yeah. yeah, and it was mm -hmm. nicely finished. And then the next one that came out was a snap on exclusive. The snap on, yeah. Yeah, the fucking snap on one, and then the trash. The production one was full black wash, which is a oh. surefire way to make your knife look cheap. Oh, I hate. Oh man, I hate that. Uh, but either way, 
Uh, my first like knife over a hundred bucks, where I was like, "Oh my god, I am balling with this knife." It is the was the ZTO three fifty tiger stripe with a partially serrated blade, and of course, you know those were like speed so safe. Two thousand twelve, very two thousand twelve. Of them. <sighs> um, but I love that knife, and I still have it. Um, and it pro and to Jake's and to, in Jake's defense, it probably spent just as much time with him. As it did with me, mm. being assisted, de being deassisted, and then assisted again, uh, mm. trying different edge profiles on it. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think we took a Dremel to the to the uh, to the uh, G10 scales. I mean, this thing looks like a dog turd now, um, but it's been with me for a long time. It'll never leave, and I and it's funny when a knife can have a nostalgic uh, effect to you. It's weird. Yeah, I have no sentimental attachment to any of my knives. It bothers people when I tell them that, but... That's because you're dead inside. I, I mean, it is true, yeah. <laughs> it's just I'm just an empty vessel. Here to criticize detents. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I was surprised you bought that nine, the 0095 Tiger Stripe. I mean, it's 240 bucks. Yeah, you know, I figure... It's cool looking. I'm going to enjoy it for what it's worth, and then I'll just pass it along if I get bored of it. Yeah. it's. I mean, it's probably going to go down as one of the more obscure ZT sprint runs. I don't think I, I don't think I can lose that much money on it. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, and maybe. In, and in a former life, Levon was essentially on a quest to to have one of every single ZT. So Yeah, he who dies with That's... the most ZTs wins. <laughs> well... That's a great transition, because exactly. are you going to be getting the new factory custom? <laughs> no, okay, all right. That's that's a okay transition, but I was going to pass this one right back to Matt. Oh, that's a better transition, about, yes. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then talk about how he's worked with a lot of the larger knife manufacturers. ZT777. Yeah, we need that story. The 777 story? Oh, of course. Yeah. This is oh. what everyone wants to hear. Yes. Ugh. Like, like all of it? Why is this... <laughs> is that like an Ugg thing? Is it not a good thing? Well, you want the Matrix side, too? I want all I, of There's it. a Matrix side? Oh, yes. This yeah. Is, yeah. Yes, there is. All yeah, of we, it. Uh, let's just start with the triple seven. Yeah. Um, they, uh, in-house design. Okay. <laughs> we'll start with that. Which in-house which are we talking about? In-house of, of uh, Kai. Mm-hmm. Um, the chuckling is worrying. Well, it, it came out. It just strangely came out that some people said it had similarities to Dimitri's work. Hmm. Sick and that, sure. that, was, that was the big, uh, you know, the biggest complaint. The early like, controversy. Beyond, beyond the whole Matrix side of it with the, the double action and shit. I, you know, probably shouldn't go into that, but, um, yeah, so they came out with it at the Blade Show, won the award. Uh, a little bit later, it said, oh, it looks similar to some of Dimitri's stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I could see some of it, some of the lines. Um, but then they went and basically made a deal with Dimitri that, hey, we want you as a designer. Got him on board. Um made it all right even though it probably was their own in-house design to begin with matt can i ask was it was the people noticing that it seemed similar to sinkovich the fans or was it more on the knife maker side because i don't remember hearing people on the fan fans. side oh really it was fans, yeah. okay it must have been i mean i guess if you knew about sinkovich back then you were probably pretty hip and the... he was pretty obscure at that point. yeah he was but okay certainly, that makes more sense that's why i didn't hear about it had never been out of belarus uh, he, he had some shit posted online, and he used a different name, Sidis or something. Yep, yep, I remember that name. Um, so there was nothing that definitely said, "Hey, this is a triple seven. It was just that there were some similar lines. Hmm. And since it was such a revolutionary design, you know, and his stuff is was kind of out there, there was some similarities. And and my part of it was I I supplied the material. They were looking for a, a really stout carbon fiber because it didn't have a line. Did they, did they specify whether it could uh, take a lightning strike or not? Uh, no. 
<laughs> we, we did do one in Lightning Strike. That's see, that's the only thing. Like I've owned three triple sevens, and I hear tales about the Lightning Strike one that you have. Yeah, I need to see it. Can you bring it to Blade? Ooh. Are you allowed to photograph it? It's Just not, bring it. It's not sharpened. Who gives a flying fuck? No one's gonna cut anything with it. No, I'm just saying it's not really finished, not marked. That's like okay. not sharpened. Even better. It is a composite blade. Oh god, oh. Um, dude! If you ever want to retire, just sell that thing. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, I have two of them. I have also the zero 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 composite. Yes. Blade. Um, oh my god. In in Vanex thirty five, not seventy five, right? Yeah. Or weird. Yeah. And they. The numbers on those are staggering. I think it was less than 200 of them that actually oh. got released. Yep. Oh my god. It was. It turned out to be a, a problem with Oodle Home. Is that really where? I thought it was. It wasn't yeah. manufacturing problem. No, it was the steel wasn't hardening, and they had all this. They had wire cut all the Devons, the top part of the composite. You know, they had so much money into these blades, and then the uh, Vanex wasn't hardening correctly. Yikes. It's so, not yeah. like they hadn't had, they never had that problem again. The whole project basically <laughs> got scrapped. They, Udalone had to make it right in the long run. That's why they used a lot the of M3, M390, right? Well, and you know, LMAX? Mostly the LMAX. Not the M390, yeah, the LMAX, sure. Um, Which had its own controversy in the ZTs, yeah. too. <laughs> I also, I also yeah. hope we're not violating any NDAs here. No, I don't think we are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not, they're not going to listen to this anyway. Yeah. Um, uh huh. I don't know. I, I guess we'll find out. At, we'll, we'll find out a blade when they come up. Someone, someone comes up to us and like, "Hey, aren't you Love on Dirk recording?" And you say yes, and they're like, "You've You're been served. served. <laughs> You've been served." <laughs> they pop out of the. They like roll out of like one of the tables with like a. Oh my god! Just look. Just look for the person who's not sweaty. Yes. Yeah. You know that's a, He's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. No, I'm definitely going to be sweaty. It's going to be like 100 fucking degrees in there. Yeah, it's steamy there, man. Yeah. yeah right. And they, they, for the most part, don't use anything Oodle Home makes anymore. Yeah. I just like to say Oodle Home. The uh, M390s, basically it's all slated for Benchmade, so they won't release it to anybody else. Mm. Interesting. Um, yeah, I went to go buy a sheet, and they're like, we got it here. It, 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 it's in Seattle, the distributor. Like, we got it here, but we can't sell it to you. Wow. So that's why people are moving to the TPM 20 CV. And sure, uh, yeah, that makes sense. But is that is that the whole triple seven story? Well, no, not all of it. Um, yes, that's just, that's just all you're getting. You know, it's it's obviously a very successful design. Yeah, I mean, and they're I and mean, we've talked about it a lot of time. They're banking on that yeah. design. And I don't think it's going to like oh, hurt absolutely. them in any way. I just think it's an amazing story to have like so many hands in the pot and have so many crazy things happen, especially when the, when the whole uh, matrix thing started. Yeah. And that was real unfortunate. It, a lot of that boiled down to a distributor that Microtech had that wanted to came, basically came to ZT and said, Hey, I want to make a, a out the front. I'm going to be the one distributing it. You know, ZT at that point had no intention of even having it as one of their products. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole story that someone from Kershaw went up to Microtech and said, hey, we're going to crush you or whatever that rumor that, is. Did that happen? a complete fabrication. Oh. Nobody on that crew would have done that. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it wasn't even really their product to do it with. Um, it could have been somebody from this uh, distributor, one of the bigger distributors, that was trying to arrange it. Um, but then, yeah, you know, it's, it turned into a whole bunch of bullshit. And the lawyers got paid. Yeah, we all know how <laughs> that part went. So it's unfortunate. I, I, I'm really kind of tied in the middle, behind the scenes on both sides. Um, having been friends with Tony and I still consider Tony a friend and then as well as a designer for Kai. Yeah. It, uh, well, that puts you in a weird position. It is. But... Well, at one time I thought I could have smoothed it out, but uh, 
I kind of got laughed at when I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's unfortunate. It would have saved them a lot of hassle because that it, would have. it was that. I mean, it's still causing problems. Yeah, and it was too far gone at that point. Yeah, I mean, what there was the the, the Natrix were introduced last year, so they're still kind of. Oh yeah. The the they're beef prodding. has not completely died yet, so they're still prodding and there's still yeah. matrixes being made. Yeah. And then the other lawsuit yeah. and stuff, yeah. It's nasty business, but I mean the 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 thing about so did did Kai drop the steel from Buller Udenholm, like stop using LMAX because of the incident with the No. Tri- uh, triple seven? Oh, okay, those are unrelated. No. They stopped using LMAX and M three ninety for availability. Ah, that makes sense. Oh, okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was like because they were they were put off by no, no, no. that incident. Like I said, Udelholm made it right. Oh, okay, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean because the Vanax deals are quite cool. I mean that was I've never heard of Vanax thirty five being used again, but no. Well, well when was Vanax seventy five used again? I that's think true. They just make something called Vanax now. They have thirty seven, which is being used by. Uh, Vanax 37 is being used by Shiragora right now. I think didn't... I mean, I don't know when that happened, but didn't uh, ZT release a couple fixed blades and an axe? That's in Vanadis, yeah. I thought. Vanadis 4 Extra. Yeah, Vanadis 4 I'm getting e. my V steals mixed up. I mean, they're confusing made-up names, so... Yes, right? Where are they getting this shit from? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Vanax 37 Shiragora is using now, but that's... These are sort of like... Halo vaporware steals. You don't really see them in many places. Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, that's all crazy great stories. Yeah. So, uh, why was there I, no... I had a, oh, sorry. I had, a few, I had a few more ZTs come out with my carbon fiber on it. Um, before they... Basically, anything you saw that was 3D'd, like uh, there was a 454... Oh yeah, yeah. we Which both had like those. Composite yep. blade. I love that knife, man. Original Holy crap! Yeah, yeah, you could actually tell that that was the same carbon fiber that was on the triple seven. Yeah, and then there was uh, an RJ, like a real thin inlay. Oh, yeah, on I, the O six hundred. I had one of those too. I did as well. Like a diamond pattern. Yeah, yeah. Man. That was a tank of it. That was a fucking yeah. swing and a miss. That knife. Yeah. Yeah. It just it was way too big for what it was. And it was way too, too thick. thick. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it flipped it awfully. Yeah. And it too also thick. cut it was that was among the in terms of performance as a knife, that was one of I the worst think, mechanical knives I've ever owned. I, I mine flipped okay, but you're right, it cut nothing. Well that was back when we, ZT we didn't really know how that. to do a detent. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. We thing. we worked on that uh I don't I don't remember exactly what we did, but we, I think we had to make it flip. Yeah, <laughs> unassisted ZTs didn't exactly flip well before the 801. The 801 was like a revolution. Well, the yeah. 801 yeah. came out before those knives, so... Did what's it? Your, yeah, by like two years. Well, the 777 didn't flip that well. It had a pretty sort of floppy oh, D10. Mine, mine uh, did. My, did it? My, I had three of them. I flipped, yeah. All, yeah. I flipped yours. I think the whole market changed, though. Yeah. I mean, back then, people didn't... Really know what they needed. Exactly, they that's true. Want that. They certainly didn't want that stiff of a detent. Yeah, they were not indoctrinated yet. Um, I, I mean, think how that. Long, how long did Hinder get away without a with a flipper that didn't flip? If you ask Dave, he still can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, the funny thing is, my XM18 had a super strong detent, which was you know, it, it, by conventional wisdom, pretty rare. Although I think Hinder has gotten a lot better about that. But then the Fire Tack had. If we really want to get into that, the Fire Tack I thought did not have very good retention in the handle for such a light blade in, in your defense dave i didn't handle the fire attack i'm just going by what jake says i it's not that the detent it's not that the action was bad it was fantastic it was just the fact that it was a super light blade like it's thin and it's narrow but it did not stay in the handle particularly well and that just bothers me if you have a thin blade that doesn't stay in the handle jesus oh. that's how specific can you get it's not that it's not that specific i mean it's just like okay if you have a big ass fucking cleaver design like yeah it makes sense that it can't stay the, that it like you can shake it out easily, but if you have a light ass like blade, I don't know, like uh, like imagine if you had the ZT four fifty, the little one. Imagine if you could just shake that out. Wouldn't that feel? Oh, speaking that of the ZT four fifty. Oh yeah. Now we can transition <laughs> to the yeah. the factory custom version of the ZT three uh, four fifty. <laughs> um, 
I, <laughs> it's a fuck, fucking travesty. I, I, I just it's, don't. I don't. I just. I don't know how they can still make money with that design to that pocket clip. Well, that is clear. The that pocket pocket clip design. Looks okay, like the it, pocket. The pocket clip. Well, we're going to talk a whole lot about the pocket clip, but but I want to re- reiterate that is ZT's best selling design is the ZT four fifty. Is it? Yeah, okay. that is the most successful knife for that company in a very, very long time. Do we have actual numbers on that, or are these podcast numbers? I don't have physical numbers, but I, yeah. I know that that is a fact. Possibly all time. Okay. I believe okay. Matt when Matt says it. Well, fuck you. Well, I believe Matt because he works some with them. variant of that, the 454. Sure. I would imagine the original and maybe the black one with the carbon fiber. Really, you can tell because Schrade just basically made made like a, a stencil of it. And, and Schrade makes own. a stencils of everything. Yes. What a great American company. Yes, American. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yes, the O four fifty FC ZD. Yes. Factory Custom. How, can, how is that the longest name for a knife? No, they've done some terribly long ones alphabet soup yeah just super alphabet soup like i get it like it's actually meaningful unlike like i don't know mercedes designations like right these actually mean something like factory custom and it's in zdp but yeah it's not um particularly sexy so what's funny is is that i had a sinkovich custom zt 450 oh yeah back when he did like 25 of those that he machined himself yes i had one of those yep i remember that you, you would you would you would shit yourself if i told you what i sold that thing for um i assume <laughs> double what you paid for it just about maybe a little more didn't recon one sell those yep and there were what how much were they from recon one four Five, something 400 oh yeah. wow oh and the high wow. five fours yeah. so you sold it for double okay and then some yeah Oh my God! Yeah, damn. Crazy. People really just want something that Sinkovich touched. If he and breathed it was... <laughs> on it. <laughs> well, to be here's what I'm trying to say. He did more than touch that one. I mean, at least he he machined both sides of the frame. Yeah, like very intricately. Yeah, and tuned the action. It actually felt really good. You know. Yeah. Um, this one, one side of the frame has some lines in it. Some extremely basic bitch lines. They. Made it like a baby shit green, like brown, gold brown, brown color. Also, oh, first off, is that anodized or is that like PVD coated? Because I, I think it, I think it's PVD coated. It does uh, machine titanium handle PVD coated. Just fucking anodize it, Jesus. Or are they saying machine titanium handle PVD coated blade? No, because the blade's DLC. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the email now. Machine titanium handle, comma PVD coating. So yes, it is that brown is PVD yeah. and not anodized. They're treating it like a Glock. Maybe that's their that's their target market now. I don't know if they're their tar- I don't know if like Glock buyers are gonna wait until nine a.m. Pacific time and then rush to like these retailers' websites to buy it. So you're saying I should get one? No, uh, I think I don't know. This is a very uninspired. Let's let's talk about the pocket clip. Okay, so we were in all the promo shots when they were first emailed out. Yeah, they. I assumed that they were holding out a big reveal. Yeah, or like a customized like 3D pocket clip with like or tritium or something. It's some crazy thing like the the party piece of the knife, but it has the same freaking Kershaw clip on it mm-hmm. with that same crazy color on it. It's just a, a crappy <laughs> non deep carry, yeah, it's straight a, clip. Yeah, it's a bent, possibly titanium. It's the clip. same clip that was on the regular one. Yeah, it which was well, already too big for the knife. What's the custom hardware? I can't tell. Is the pivot slightly different? Yeah, the pivot has little scallops in. It. Oh, okay, I, I couldn't tell if that was a shadow or not. All right, yeah. well, that's what you're and paying a <laughs> hundred dollars extra for. One hundred fifty dollars extra. And and don't forget the Sinkovich designed uh, aluminium backspacers or barrel spacers. <laughs> Jesus. You know what's oh. really funny is that the regular uh, 450CFZDP is probably more desirable than this. But I think so. The one with the satin like blade. That, yeah. That's the actual one that I kind of would want to have right now is the one with the carbon fiber scale and the ZDP blade. Yeah, and satin. That thing is like, that thing is gorgeous. And those are now ha- worth a lot. Are they really? Not a lot, but like they're worth more than they originally you sold You know why? For. It's because you just said that. Now they're going to be worth a lot. Uh, we, you really think we have that kind of power? <laughs> I feel like we have a little bit of sway <laughs> with the dick. I feel like we have very, very minimal swaying with the dick, but... And the balls. <laughs> Don't get that involved. 
but anyway. just the podcast deck. But yeah, um, not my favorite factory custom. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I, I, why is I don't understand how oh. it's a factory custom if they just like. I I, un, I know what it is. Paint, they spray painted it and put it in a box. ZT is making up what it owes uh, Sinkovich because the 427 is never coming out. Like, ever. <laughs> oh, yeah, that thing. It's it's never it's never happening. It, you know what? We, we say that every single time, but you know what happens? It eventually comes out? It comes out. I mean, yeah, maybe it'll just take a long time. I've, just... totally for, I've totally forgot about that knife. I can sort of put a mental image together of it, but I mostly can't. It's it's interesting. I don't really know what's holding it up, though. That's the confusing thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, as Matt said, it could be anything. Yeah, that's true. I want to talk about something that I got in the mail uh, from from our buddy Adam Purvis. Ooh, yes. Did, oh, okay. Is that I, okay? I feel, yeah. I just I I felt like there's no way that that Matt was done his life story. Did we cut him know. off? I don't. Did we cut you off, Matt? What do you want to hear? <laughs> I mean, well, in that case, never mind. We're bouncing. Thought... We're bouncing around now. We got the ZT story from from Hades. Okay. And and then we're gonna. We're, I mean, I, I invite Matt to to join in with anything. Anyway, this, so I got uh, this. What? This four fifty. Did, did Dimitri do work on it? No. In the I same way that Hin. It. In the same way that Hinderer did work on all of the factory customs. I mean, theoretically, Hinderer shop machined like the hardware. That was yeah, that's that was that was so, the custom part of it. Is Dimitri? Maybe I think he makes the backspacers. That's what I was actually serious okay. about. Huh. Yeah, I, I... he's basically salt baying a bunch <laughs> of ZT four fifties. Yeah, <laughs> and like salt bay, uh, it's he's not actually doing much. Yeah, could you, you ma imagine Dimitri oh, I, I just sort of? That's a lot of salt he puts on them steaks. Yeah, rolling rolling some little <laughs> some barrel spacers off his elbow <laughs> into a pile in in. The, and now we have a cover. Now we have yeah. the cover for this episode. Completely oh, unrelated, but... But it wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> Dimitri Sinkovich is on the cover of, of Matt Diskin's episode. <laughs> we'll just put Matt's face Foiled on Foiled again, Dimitri's Matt! Body. <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. Read the reviews of his restaurant in New York. It's hysterical. Oh, Jesus. Dimitri Sinkovich has a, has, a, has a restaurant in New York? Yeah, he went from never having left Belarus a couple of years ago to having a restaurant in... Midtown Manhattan, definitely. I think I think somebody. Wait, what? <laughs> anyway, um, salt bay. Yeah, I get it now. But can I talk about the pet my package? Yeah, swing it, swing it on over to the microphone. Um, so I got a box the other day. I got a couple boxes the other day. One was a package. One was a box. From first one was from Adam Purvis, and it was the prototype of his primordial model which is built by Wee Knives. Um, and it was an interesting project that he's been working on for a while. It was, it was a knife design that he drew up. Um, he had um, the 2D design, uh, CAD drawing done by Elijah Isham. Uh, and then it was sent out to Wee. And the final product is quite good. I mean, I'm unsurprised. In a good um, way. In a good way. The, but even even if you're not even if you're not surprised by the build quality of the, yeah. of the thing, which of course is very very good, the design is just really great. I really love the knife, and I'm going to send I, it to I, you, I, Dave. Oh, oh yeah, definitely send it to Dave. But wait, because I have a I have some stuff to send him to. I just wrote Adam. Uh, what? However many characters is the max on uh, Instagram DM today? Um. You know, when you handed it to me, I think you said something to the tune of, he, you know, the first thing I said is, oh, man, this would flip great if it had a flipper. Oh. And, and you were like, but this is a this is a knife collector's knife. It's not supposed to have a... And I was like, uh, what does that mean now? And then I get it. I, like, I had a lot of vodka when I said that, man. Like, <laughs> I may have no, said that. No, but... I mean, like, er, kind of everything has a flipper and he wanted to stand out. I think it makes sense. But uh, I love it. I told him. I told him. Obviously, the 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 fish hook pocket clip is uh, is a is a non starter, oh, yeah. but, um, which he laughed about. He had already modified his, but uh, yeah. I just thought it was great that someone is uh, is doing and not overbuilt 
titanium frame lock. But if anything, marginally underbuilt, like it's lightweight. It's a, and, it's a, it's and a it's gentleman's perfectly, folder. Yeah, it's stout enough to do what we actually do with our knives. If you have 20 or 50 or 100 knives, you don't need you know, a, a three quarter inch thick titanium slab every single day. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just great. And I, and I hope that, uh, I hope that that works for him, you know, because the, I think the overbuilt thing is, is a, almost like a crutch in the industry to, to make sure that you, sure, you know, for shoddily hit, built stuff, hit, hit your sales numbers or whatever. But I don't uh, think that that's the case anymore though. I feel like that trend is sort of dying off. I, However, it, I think it is, and that's why I'm saying I just hope this works for him because I I absolutely loved it. I loved everything about it. I, I yeah, I I think he's going to do very well with them. Uh, if you don't follow Adam already, you definitely should. He's a Purvis Blades on Instagram, um, and the production run of the Primordials is going to be starting soon. Uh, we're actually going to be giving one away. Exciting. Maybe you guys didn't know that. I didn't find out until you posted on Instagram. There you go. So we're actually going to be giving away one of those. Uh, they're they're a single run, from what I understand. I don't know what his plans are with them, but um, you're going to. They're. I think they'll be a very popular knife, and I think that's something that everybody should. Look Is he doing to. two single run with two finish options? Is that what he's doing? There's or? two finish options. One that's good, and the other one that I don't like because it's black washed. Okay, but it actually kind of looks good on that knife. It's got it's got some carbon fiber on it, Matt. Ooh. Yeah, so Chinese relevant. Carbon fiber. Yeah, the best kind, right? Yeah. Send. yeah. <laughs> I'll send him a picture. <laughs> yeah, send him a picture of it. Um, and the other thing that I got in the mail were uh, from Greg Geckel of Quest Custom Knives. We received right. two of the Kutzos, which is um, a patented design that he has. Patented? Patented. The actual design, from what I get, is 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 patented. How do you patent the design? You can patent a design. Design patent. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I thought you could. I thought it was just. I didn't think that was like functional. I thought it had to be functional. Sick burn. Anyway, um, I thought patents had to be like a functional no, thing. No, there's two types. Oh, okay. Why doesn't everyone do that with their knives then? Well, it's got to be probably, it's protecting. Probably, yeah, it's got to be a lot of work. I can't imagine. Okay. Like this, this knife here is worth protecting. Uh, I will tell you. From I mean, I'm not one. To, I can't really say one way or another. Uh, but I will tell you that I'm not normally a fan of like cleaver designs. <laughs> they always just seem kind of like silly, right? The whole idea of like carrying a folding cleaver is kind of kind of yeah. silly. And this they what they the al- world needs. they always look kind cleaver. right, and they all look kind of. <laughs> unrefined or comical comical in a lot of ways exactly this is the first one that hasn't offended me Uh, (laughs) yeah well dave i'm going to send them to you too all right um and and jake what did you think of them I, i mean i wish i had something different to say than what you just said but i i guess i feel the same way they, they were great. I mean the um the the big one <laughs> the big one has uh what was the blade stock on that thing? Like uh thick. Very thick, eighth yeah. inch. And what's funny is you can't huge. shake it out of the detent. Very true. No? Yeah, the de- it's really good. Yeah, he, he seems to have the ability to uh to set his, his detent strength really wherever he wants. You know, I think years ago it was like companies were just trying to get the the max the most that they could without too much lock bar pressure or whatever but um you know greg's design seems because we've had some we've had some of his knives for review recently that were too much de- oh um, sure. i'm sorry dave cover yours for a second uh, no i too, agree too much detent pressure i agree it was i remember those oh shut up i handled them um no. he did he did done listening to you talk about detents anyway mm-hmm. uh so yeah, I would say the big one was a little too heavy for me to, to EDC, but the the little one is awesome. I mean, it's still chunky, even though it's small. So one of them but, is like a three inch blade, three, and the other one is a two and a two and a half or two point two inch. It might just be a two inch blade. I think that's yeah, what it is. The, the little one I, I described as the world's most perfect lime cutter. Yeah, I for some reason it like, just makes you want to 
cut like, they have they have a lot of charm i don't know yeah. I've, I've actually i didn't have like you know incredibly high hopes of, of what these knives are going to be but they've surprised me mm -hmm. yeah but i'll be sending those over to dave to check out too Matt, i take it you don't like cleaver designs very much <laughs> yeah no <laughs> I, I don't i and like i said i don't think I, it's something that i've i mean especially since there's so many production ones you know i mean what there's no purpose in them right if you want a cleaver you, get you a want cleaver. A, you, yes you cleave with the, it the purpose is that when you have a hundred knives and none of them are shaped like a cleaver you need yeah. a cleaver that's, that's right that's one problem. of every blade shape or you're not uh you don't have a complete collection so i guess we're not we're not going to get a a, a, a disc and action, cleaver disc and cleaver yeah. yeah with photoshop you will it would call maybe called the disc cleaver. Could, oh, maybe you should send him one of those uh, rusty horror film ones that you got at the uh, oh yeah Lehigh show <laughs> from Frank. I got actual cleavers. Yes. Well, that I can get behind. Yeah, you would like at, these. At least half of them have been used in a murder. Uh, they I hang them like right outside. Uh, I have like this little pre porch. Like, I don't know. It's like a sunroom thing. You you know where I'm talking about, you, yeah. Matt. You've been here. So I, that's where I have these gigantic cleavers hanging. So yeah. if anyone tries to come through, like, the porch area or the backyard, they're, they're going to see that shit. Ahead. Yeah, they're just going to see that shit and be like, nope, not going in there. Or if they came without a weapon, they go, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, perfect. Oh, yeah, they will grab one of these. Can, yeah, you, right. can you just, like, hang a gun up there? I feel and like that would be a better deterrent. No, because that's when they get shot, when they I come say, through the Now you have to shoot, and you can't even think about it. You have to shoot every person that comes through that door because, <laughs> you know, chances are they're going to have a weapon. Good thing I got my Glock slide back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, how is that uh, that fresh machining looking? It's, you know, it's like factory. <laughs> He got the color spot on. I have spot on, it. yeah. It looks just like Factory. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of that, I actually got one of the Olight PL Minis in the their desert tan. I, and I'm doing air quotes on the desert tan because it matches my burnt bronze incredibly well. Unless I somehow accidentally bought a desert tan Glock 19. That's how suspicious I am with the with the color match. That's all. That's all I have to say. It happens, just just like the the t Tiffany blue thing I sent you today, right? No, Robin, I didn't. Robin's I didn't get blue. Robin's egg blue. Do you know what? Every time I think of the Robin's egg blue, I got my mom purchased a a teal one of the teal delicas, and I posted a picture of that earlier today. Yeah. And Jake says to me, "It's like it's Robin's egg blue." No, and no, no. I sent you a link to a product which happened to be a Glock. Uh, uh, it was a Glock frame. slide, right? Yeah. Or no, no, it was a frame. frame in what they called robin's egg. robin's egg blue and it so, looked identical to to that delica and so I, jake you might remember this matt i don't you might brian you might remember this dave you probably don't so when probably at the same time i was taking snickers home uh crayola had this competition where if you got one of their big box of crayons right they had a sleeve of brand new colors in there without names, right? Oh, and you're going to name it. So here's the thing. Kids from all over. This was like a big thing. There was no internet, so everybody was just fucking naming crayon colors and putting them on envelopes and actually sending them to Crayola. So one of the the last ones to get named, it was like the, the big deal color, was this the Tiffany blue color. And some kid got all the recognition in the world for calling it Robin's Egg Blue. So it was the number, like, when everybody thought of Crayola crayons, they thought of Robin's Egg Blue back in the early 90s, I would say this was. Um, mm -hmm. So now every time someone says that or I see this color, it's exactly what it evokes for me. That's, that's, amazing. Yeah. that's amazing. Early, that's early amazing. 90s, I was chasing pussy and getting drunk i wasn't thinking yeah. about playing with crayons yeah oh. i was done with crayons at that point. Yeah, and, well in the early 90s 10. yeah that was very or, or, or eight <laughs> yeah i was like eight man and dave wasn't yeah. born dave was like eating crayons there was a <laughs> lot of nah dude shoes <laughs> i didn't eat crayons only shoes only shoes yeah wow 
but that, that was a lot of passion for crayons. It's, my it's our, I, I, it's a, it's a, one of those like memories that just burned in my uh, funnel lobe. <laughs> Is that where that stuff goes? No, hippocampus. But the hippocampus, clo close enough. Maybe the cerebellum has something to do with it. It doesn't actually, but it, maybe. Uh, oh, fine. This is so luxurious having someone else to answer psych questions. Someone who knows more than me. <laughs> Isn't that more of like a neuroscience question? Yeah, sort of. Anyway. Yeah, but that's that's kind of like what Dave is into. Yes, that is. Should we get to the questions for Matt? Because we do have some. Oh, yeah. Let's do yeah. questions. I think, we've, me, uh, I think we've covered some of them already, but I've got them pulled yeah, up. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ad-lib and just find the questions that we haven't answered. How yeah. does that sound? Okay. Oh, here's one. So we did mention the, the lightning strike triple seven. Why did, why did that not happen? Was it because the blade issues or was it uh, something else? <laughs> I don't know. They only actually made the one. Yeah. I, I gave enough material to make, I think, 20 of them. Oh, okay. Do you think they did it for, like, the shits and the giggles? Because that's why no, I would have done he, it. he did, and I actually traded a fire for it. That was a uh, that was a solid trade, I think. To the production manager. Wow. So, he screwed up real bad. Well. I don't know. I mean, I'd rather have a fire. I mean, after owning the triple sevens, and I have never owned a fire. Yeah. But that's beside the point. I mean, in terms of maybe just in resale value, he could have had. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Just it's Enigma. The, yeah, right. that the, 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 the fire is awesome, but having the yeah. only triple seven in lightning strike is is pretty huge. Yeah. I have no intentions on getting rid of it or anything like that. So can you put it in a museum so that other people can see it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Kershaw Museum. Come put it in my sunroom so people can fear. Hey, it. if if Quartermaster can apparently have a museum in their oh, Texas yeah. location, then Kershaw can definitely have a museum. Right next to their. Uh, God. Their, their medical grade clean room and whatever oh, and, man. and decommissioned cia spying equipment or whatever yo do you think they're going to blade show i mean if they are it's just gonna be jared brown bagging oh i can't wait we gotta sneak up on these fuckers um <laughs> let's get some more questions fired at you okay uh john gray wants to know when you're going on forged and fire yeah never okay um <laughs> wait can we get some elaboration one have you done any forging oh yeah i'm a journeyman smith oh, that he, seems like a big he, thing uh, to talk about yeah that oh, would have yeah. been that this is yeah that would have been good to cover in the in the bio section yeah, yeah. i guess it would have been the 10 years i sat in front of a forge yeah I, let's see uh i started i went to a school in washington arkansas back right around 2000 and uh Two classes there, forging. One of them was with Bill Moran. Oh, wow. And uh, so I got to spend a week with him. And, uh, yeah, I was really into forging mosaic, character mosaic Damascus. Kind of had developed a process where I could use flat layers and get it laser cut out into different characters and then forge it into different blocks and Spent a lot of years doing that. Um, I think the reason I got away from it was that it was all in carbon steel. And that that market kind of went away with the real high-end folder market. Gotcha. Uh, the the sole, and, sole authorship, carbon well, everyone, Damascus. Everyone wasn't happy with the rust. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, the fundamentals were so different back then. We'd make folders with 40,000 liners. Wow. If, if it was under four inches. Mm -hmm. And 50,000 liners was about as thick as you'd go. That's basically because they were being used to open letters with money in them. Yeah. To buy they, more knives. They were, they well, were going to people who actually collected them. There wasn't this whole they, flipping. They have, like, they have like chairs made of ivory and the rest of the elephant's head yeah. is on the wall. I also, I hate to say it, but that's implying that people, the knives now with liners double that thickness aren't being used for the exact same purpose oh no i that's yeah. true <laughs> that's very true so but it, it, so many things have changed in that way as far mm. as you couldn't have come out with a, a cleaver in the pit and the blade show at that mm -hmm. time without getting laughed at 
I can um, see that. Yeah, there was one time you you guys heard of Farid? Yeah, that fighter co thing. Farid Mayor, yeah. Yeah, he showed up at the pit with his doubly thick folding frame lock. The K two. Basically, got laughed out of the pit. Wow, uh, that's actually he kind was of sad. So far ahead of his time. <laughs> Yeah, that is kind of sad. I mean, <laughs> maybe that's why he has such a chip on his shoulder. We had talked mm. about it once, but he got into like a fight with Sal Glesser on yeah. Blade Forums called and canceled his knife. Called him out publicly. Yep. <laughs> that was a weird well, exchange. And that was the last we've heard of Farid Mare. 100%. That and Spider yeah. K2 that I have in my yeah. knife case. Yes. We also used to use uh, different liner material. 15 and 20. Was a lot of knives had Liners made out of 15 and 20. Ah, uh, the, um, the steel that could use for a lot of Damascus. Yeah, it heat colors really well. Oh, that makes sense. There was there was a whole time when it was titanium and discotheque colors, and and then it really moved over into those carbon steels and hot blued and oh, moved away from titanium for a lot of knife makers. I, like almost like jeweler's techniques rather than uh, a than lot of like, it was. I mean, yeah, everything was firework. Is it um, is it like this uh, corkscrew knife that you made that's for sale on Arizona Custom Knives? That was about that period. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like it. It is for sale if anyone's interested. Eleven ninety five. Yeah. It has a built-in corkscrew. I used to make a few corkscrews every year for uh, French here. people, and it's <laughs> Damascus corkscrew. Oh, this is classy. whoa! That's actually badass. Yeah, this is classy. I will I will put this in the show notes. Yes, send it send it to the group group chat real quick. I gotta yeah. take a look myself. It's actually a waiter's friend. It's got a little foot. Is that what you uh, called it? That's a really wussy name. Well, that's what they're called. I kid <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's for your it's for your picnicking needs. Oh, I have my uh, waiter's friend. Wow, you didn't do one bad impression earlier of a I specific got, group of people. Yeah, you gotta I follow it up. I have to follow it up, sure. I have a this a Damascus corkscrew. Wow! Made from Mister Mad this game. Now CV is never going to listen to the podcast. Right. So awesome. things things changed a, a lot. You know, a lot of what you would have got, what you would have done back then, stopped selling. You know, mm. and the the whole market kind of changed into younger collectors who were not really coveting these knives anymore they're kind of possessing them yeah for for a certain amount of time and then not necessarily building a giant collection but you you'd sell it and move on to something new or something better the oh, next I, I know guys i know guys like that yeah on, I mean, on we're, all, we're all kind of guilty of it yeah You're, it's the way <laughs> the market is now yeah uh, who are, and those, who are those, you accusing, I, Jake? I know another guy who complains about it all the time. Yeah, Brian is a big oh, fan of yeah. this. I won't. Yeah, I'm not going to say who it is. He's a knife maker who's on this podcast, and you know, I'm not going. Brian, Brian fell asleep an hour ago. I don't <laughs> yeah. know what you guys are talking about. Yeah, I'm oh, so it, bored by all of this. <laughs> God. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, we... You guys lost me when you started talking about all those fucking ZT bullshit, 002, 007, whatever the fuck it is. I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they can't all be named Typhoon and Chicane because I'm a race car driver now. I went from storms to turns. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I... It's amazing how much you hate knives for being a custom knife maker. Brian. Seriously. No, I just deal with it all day, every day. And then I got to come and deal with these dick Talk about it. Balls at night. <laughs> it's okay. He's actually laughing over there. I can tell. <laughs> I don't um, know why the, the race car driver thing came. <laughs> it wasn't from, good. From stops <laughs> to turns. What are you going to do about it? Can we you can just... I mean, I'm sorry, Matt. Like, I'm glad you're here, but all the best, all the best ideas for the cover, are, just have nothing to do with you. Yeah, <laughs> From storms to turns, what are you gonna do about it? I, I'm I mean, just gonna, I'm just gonna put Matt's face on the button of one of his uh, automatic <laughs> knives. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Uh, great. You push Matt's nose, and then a knife shoots out. Speaking of which, that is one of the questions on uh, Instagram: is how did you get into double action? 
autos. Yeah, because like nobody does right. double actions, more or less. I mean, aside from a very select few. Matt, will you, will you make me one where the button is on the face of the frame rather than <laughs> the top? Because I really prefer it that way. The face of the frame. Yeah, like the infidel rather than the ultra tech. But that's how like all of no, his. You know what I'm saying? Are you talking about the front? Mm -hmm. He's talking about OTF mm -hmm. now. He's he's uh, changed the subject entirely. No, the that's what the question uh, on Instagram was. Preferred. No, it's about double action. Oh, well, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I prefer it on the side myself. But Wait, which which one's the side? Not on, you don't prefer it on your face. That's, I'm not that's on good. the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I prefer it from the side. <laughs> yeah, it's, I I think on, on as far as like um, out the fronts. I don't really have a preference. Yeah. I mean, with the infidel, don't you have to like rearrange your grip if you're going to use it in like a normal no, sort of saber grip? No, not me. Okay. I don't know not what me. kind of weird spider hands you have, but... <laughs> not me. <laughs> um, I'll, sh I'll show you. You send me an infidel, I'll show you how to use it. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Throw it at a turn. <laughs> you're such a fucking asshole, dude. He's making it rain. The typhoon out here. <laughs> oh man, it's so. I go between Brian and Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> I mean, Carl's from New Jersey. And then in parentheses to the break of dawn. To the break of dawn. Listen, I listen to these damn things, and I don't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh, so here, here comes the denial. So Matt, about oh those God. double actions. Yes. How yes. did how did you get interested in double actions specifically, not just regular autos? You know, I'd have to give it all to Butch. Okay. Basically, he was the one who had figured it out, showed me how to do it. Um, how many inches is that? When you when you make give it all to Butch. When you make when you're basically making a knife, and then you're then turning it into a. a switch plate. So it has to be a good working frame lock or liner lock mm -hmm. first. And actually probably better because it has to be pretty durable because the it's a blade's lot of stress. flying open. Yeah. A lot of stress and the blade's flying open so hard. So it's like the lockup's got to be cut pretty early because it works its way in. Um, everything's got to be pretty stout. And they're, they're pretty well meant to self-destruct. Really? They're, uh, you know, most autos, people play with them. Oh, yeah, and the mm -hmm. spring breaks eventually. Incessantly until they break. Yeah. Um, so I fight a lot with the durability on it. Do you have, like, a, a, do you have like a number on cycles before, like, the spring just says, fuck you? Oh, if, any, if anyone does. The system does, I it use, it's very me. few. Like, the, the Vulcan Amsterdam's, mm -hmm. that's a production model. I have thousands of them out there I, I stop counting it's well over five between five and ten thousand of them and i don't get them back oh really maybe one or two a year do you stress test them do you ever just have you ever looked at the bottom of a lake <laughs> <laughs> that's probably where they are <laughs> but but they're not coming back to me <laughs> that's good you know what? That's a, yeah. You, that's a good point because you both have. I mean, with a dual action, you have both the liner or frame, if it's a frame lock, to worry about, and the spring breaking. So, I I'm, guess I'm not surprised that more production companies don't do them. Yeah, they're not real easy to. Do they're complex, parts. right? I mean, it's an entire. There's, it's like there's a lot more parts. Yeah. Mm. You, Certainly not the lowest hanging fruit. No. Yeah. It and. It certainly it also requires you to sort of design around it, right? Like because you need yeah. to be able to you need to be able to fit everything in. So like the yeah. were the overlays on the fire to like accompany the mechanism or the backspacer or something. The overlays were the trigger. Ah, okay, yeah. Thought I remember it that. Also, it also hid all the pockets. There we go. The, for the mechanism to fit in. Ah, okay. That makes Sexy. sense. But the wheel sort of takes care of that problem because it seems like you can fit that mechanism a little better. It becomes a design actually, feature at that I, point. Yeah. I stuffed it all on the inside. Um, if you look at my Instagram page, I just posted a picture a couple days ago. Of, of all the revolutions, milling, right? Of all the milling of the revolutions mm -hmm. on the inside. And, uh, and none of that is 
for weight reduction at all. Wow. Yeah. They're, they're all parts that fit into there. Can you, to keep, keep in the theme of the old days, do you think the Valentins don't get enough credit these days? Because I think, I mean, it seems Probably like all of the older knife makers that we talked to, the established ones, all... They all mention him. Yeah. Right? Mention, mention the, the whole him. family, yeah. 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 And he's... Butch has pretty much stopped making knives. He's in his 70s. But he's got one son that's still full-time, and then two or three grandkids <clears throat> that are working in the shop making stuff and they they crank out a lot of stuff uh so. they're one of like the first like knives where i was like whoa this is so cool because they used like a uh, mosaic damascus and yeah and they do say? fancy stuff like that, super right? fancy yeah. i want to say that one of them was featured in the movie drive as well um which is a pretty pretty big movie to have a, a custom knife in huh yeah um let me make sure about that but I will try and find a picture of that, but I'm pretty sure they have one. They have a Valentin custom in it. I can I can see the cover of that movie. What's his name? What's the guy's name? Ryan he's Gosling. In the, he's in the Notebook. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Why is the Notebook the first thing that comes up? Oh my god! Isn't, isn't that what made him famous, or at least yeah, a Hollywood sex symbol? Arguably, yeah, yeah. But there are a bunch of. Uh, yeah, so there are people who have tried to identify this. Some people say it might be a Valentin, but that's cool. Anyway, yeah, I just remember seeing their name when I first got into knives, looking on Arizona Custom Knives and being, like, amazed by the Mosaic yeah. Damascus. Yeah, really. The... Some of those really, really fancy-looking multicolored hot greenies. Yeah. Stayed with. I remember, like, saving those photographs back when I first, first started uh, And the mammoth collecting. If you, yeah. if you want to impress someone who's not into knives, just show them one of those. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe even back when I was trying to get Levon to start collecting knives. Yeah. No, that I, was just that I was mean, just G GTC photos I was sending him. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but I still have them like saved to my phone. Yeah, me, like, me where too. am I getting this crap? <laughs> yeah, the Val the Valton stuff is really is really yeah. great. And I feel I feel really blessed because Butch became a real good friend of mine. We're still good friends. We traveled to the SHOT Show and Blade Show for many years, rooming together. And, uh, you know, kind of like a father figure in a lot of ways. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and I think it, cool. it probably struck you pretty pretty hard, too, because you were going into engineering and stuff like that, too. And it kind of made yeah. sense that you fell into, like, a more complex side of the folding knife world. Yeah. Got to use some of the skills the things I've, I've learned. Certainly That's the awesome. computer side of it. Yeah, well, I, I think people will eventually come to appreciate, you know, what that sort of style of knife again. Yeah. Things will things will correct themselves eventually. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to some extent, it already is. There's like the trend of overbuilt stuff seems to be really going away. Oh yeah, that's things are really trite. In yeah, life industry. Mm -hmm. Trite is definitely the word. Yeah. <laughs> The fancier and fancier materials only goes so far. I mean, someone's got to invent something new that isn't Timascus. That's, yep. and that's, that's what you know, I thought you were going to say was the, the next uh, uh, material to just fizzle out. Well, <laughs> Superconductor already fizzled out, I think. I, that, yeah, that was a fun, that was a brief and fun one. <laughs> but it, but you could, it could get struck by lightning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he ran out. Oh, it's just gone. Was it just well, one person that had the superconductor? There was the real stuff that was really clean and sharp. It was one guy, and he worked at, I don't know, one of those Sandia labs or something, where they were using it in a, a collider. And, oh. uh, yeah. And he, wow. He, he ended up with a bunch of it, was selling it off. Hmm. And then there's other companies that make it for microwave ovens and stuff, but You'll see it's not not as pristine. So if I, like, go smash my, my microwave, <laughs> there might be some superconductor. There might be one in there. Hey, everybody, go destroy your microwaves. Look for the superconductor. No, but but the, the only yeah, way you get a free t-shirt. The Send only way you can... All right, I'm going. The only way you can uh, destroy your microwave uh, or, or find the superconductor is if you put your phone in there for four, 30 seconds. So the stuff we see... On knives, is, <laughs> that was uh, funny. Okay, 
<laughs> it's, it's funny what it's a crash not drawn it was. Out. You know, the, yeah, the right. Drawn out into long wires. Right. As a superconductor, and the stuff we see is before it's been drawn out. Oh. Yeah, I never really understood. Oh, that make that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're seeing like a big round chunk of it. It's the Play-Doh when it comes out of the container, not when Stella exactly. rolls it. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Damn. Think about all the superconductor that was ruined by bad amateur makers like three years ago. Wow. <laughs> R.I.P. to the mat trails, for real. Yeah. The new one, I think, is uh, the, what do you call it, the Carbo Quartz? Yeah. Well, at least yeah. that's not finite, right? That's like a producible material. It's just one it's person's making it, right? Well, it's, the guy who's selling it now is having it made in Europe. For Richard so, Mille. And that's a, part of the reason it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's several companies. What it is, it's called Thin Ply Spread Toe. So they, they take the... It's not a very catchy name. Yeah. They, they take the, the, bundle, the bundle of uh, fibers. Whereas normally in a, in a woven cloth, you'll see like one square will be a bundle. And that's, that's the toe number where you see like 6K or 12K. That's how many fibers are in each ah, little bundle. It's kind of like when you buy the thread count in sheets. Yeah, very similar. So it doesn't determine the weight of the fabric. It's just the amount of fibers in each little bundle before they weave it into... Ah. And so what the carbocourt stuff is, is it's called a spread toe where they put it through a machine and it spreads the fibers into a flat layer, <clears throat> a real thin flat layer. So that's how he's getting all that definition. It's, it, there is no weave on that stuff. It's, it's just it's all straight. A yeah. unidirectional that's a 0, 090. There's some much more attractive carbocourts pieces than others. Chris Some Reeve. Some of it just looks like freaking yeah. G10. Chris Reeve yeah. did a limited edition in Cozy at, with Carbo Quartz, uh, I think for Blade last year or Shot oh, Show. Wow. And um, the, it doesn't look interesting. It looks like uh, some smudged carbon fiber. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. So I don't really know what changes, like, I think what a lot kind of piece you get. How you, how you contour Cut it. it oh, yeah, yeah. It is a flat scale. So it's like basically yeah. not contoured. And then on, yeah. on, the, on the other end of the spectrum, Brian did that inlay that looked like carbo quartz and it was g10 it was g10 right um you know john john gray is working a lot with the carbo quartz and i think it came out pretty good yeah you well, guys got a pretty good run i think it's expensive material so it's going on high-end stuff yeah um, i don't think i would pay a premium for it personally it'll have a lifespan like everything right Very else. Hmm. interesting it's, so, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, maybe Brian, you ought to look look out for some. Maybe you'll throw some in some uh, micros. Yeah, I was gonna get a piece last year when he first came out with it, and um, I forget what. You know what? It was like it just wasn't enough difference from carbon fiber to justify like yeah. a four hundred dollar piece for two for two inlays. You know. What you mm -hmm. really gotta do is just get some cheap ass brass or bronze or copper because people will still buy that <laughs> it's true people will definitely want that and i can't imagine sheets of copper are particularly expensive it is when you're at blade show <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> maybe diamond wood will come back oh god please no <laughs> <laughs> benchmade has done such an awful job of of <laughs> using diamond wood that i think they've ruined it for everybody oh it's been ruined oh they picked the worst i have one knife with diamond wood and i got the worst. I took a picture of it next to my parents' cabinets. Uh, their oh, cabinetry is from oh, 1972, and it oh, is a dead ringer for their cabinets. <laughs> it looks hideous. It looks like their oak cabinets. And oak, I'm not sure, is coming back ever. Yeah. <laughs> Diamond. I remember throwing throwing rag my cardo away. Oh, that sh is that that's super rare too, right? That's a, that's a rare mat trail. It is. I just my like card is coming back, man. My card is like. The shiznit right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, as our composite guy, Matt, why do yeah. production companies prefer G10 to micarta? Is it because micarta uses more natural fibers and is harder to work with no. for some reason? Yeah, micarta was a trade name. Yeah, it was an insulator, right? One. Well, they, it had a lot of uses. Yeah, I mean, it was basically one of the first plastics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
but it uses a phenolic resin. I was going to say, I've, I've, I've seen it is, called phenolic. Uh, yeah, which is stinky and, stuff. you know, a little poisonous. Is oh, that pre-preg or post-preg? It was a pre-preg, I think. Mm. For at least the the <laughs> the real Westinghouse stuff. Right. They had the trademark on it. Um, now, G10, there's a lot of different forms, but it's usually a, a, a glass fiber. Yeah. Like a I love how I got a serious answer out of that. I with, would a, with an epoxy <laughs> resin as the binder. Um, so it's got a little more stability. The micarta, they would use all kinds of different fabrics, paper, linen, mm-hmm. cloth, mm-hmm. and then inject it with the phenol resin. So they're, That's they're very, very exciting. similar. It's just the <laughs> makeup of one to the other. I mean, and availability. Micarta, you can get such cool. So burlap micarta is one of my favorites. It looks it looks sort of three dimensional, even though it isn't. Yeah, that's a really sort and a of lot cool of that one. really wouldn't be micarta. It probably has epoxy resin. Yeah, mm-hmm. interesting. So it's just a laminate at that point. Do you want to get involved in our fake Westinghouse uh, scam that we're going to start running, producing? I like it. We're going to start producing fake Westinghouse micarta and claim it's vintage. Out of styrofoam. We're going to, have, we're going to, we're going to age it in, a, in an oven or something. Well, he probably has an autoclave. We could use that. Yeah. We're going to be making money hand over fist when we discover this Hell yeah. old, old this, this treasure trove of old Westinghouse micarta that no one knew about. Barry will buy it all. <laughs> Chris Yellow. Um, yeah. Do you, Westinghouse is... It's, I, I kind of like it. It's nice. The, the, when it gets that, like, when it does get that, like, piss yellow color, though, I don't know. I don't, I think it's silly. The, I think, the yeah. ivory color I kind of like, but, like, when it gets too yellow is when it starts looking kind of... I was watching, yeah. so you guys will find this amusing. I was watching Terra Fanatic review Brian's, uh... Oh. <laughs> the I was watching Terra Fanatic review, uh... The best comment Brian. is that, oh, I didn't know Brian made his stuff in China. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Well, the funniest part was was he was he was completely boggled by what the the material was in <laughs> what the is this material. unknown inlay material. Yeah. Yes. Any oh my god, yeah. It's like yeah. just he guess had, it's either G10, G10 or micarta. In there. Just yeah, guess. It was, it, yeah, it's G10 or micarta. You got a 50/50 shot of G10 or micarta. <laughs> it's not ivory. Like that- and it's not like that information was very difficult to find out. <laughs> it's giraffe bone, actually. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. It, yes, it's it's mammoth. Yeah, Mike kind of just uh, flies off the seat of his pants. He doesn't. Um, he doesn't ask any questions. Or anything. It, it was fun to watch. I will say that. In, 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 just was, like our that's... podcast, research is uh, not important. No, uh, clearly we 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 are we set the standard for for research and factual information. So. <laughs> You know, there's that. Yeah. Um, but that, that that struck me funny because it was it it was just in line with what we were talking about. <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's a it's a white material inlaid in this thing. <laughs> what could it possibly be? What could it possibly be? <laughs> Let's see. Is there any other good questions for Matt? Um, um, I think Mark Begg called you a mattress. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, there was too much autocorrect going on there. Yes, I like how he he's, it auto. He's yeah. so macho, and then he corrected it and said metro, and then he said macho again. Yeah, I don't, the, the only thing the only thing metro about um, about Matt Diskin is his Timascus Panerai bracelet. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. And Mark's Mark's not really one to be talking. And yeah, that, yeah, that's true. The two of you together when you wear that bracelet. Wait till I'm there I don't think too. It's, it's intended as an insult coming from. Oh Mark. no, no, that's that's a, that's a mark of quality. It, it was an insult coming from Todd though in that uh, one news <laughs> that one newspaper article that from Texas where, oh, he, talk, yeah. where he talked about Mark. Yeah, I wow. recall. Not nice. Ooh. Not nice. <laughs> we don't need to get into this one too. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> We've got enough lawsuits lined up from talking about yeah. all of that inside information from Kershaw's ET. <laughs> yes, yeah, so. well. Right. And wasn't there wasn't there a an incident where someone asked us to edit something and 
we left it in by accident somewhere six months ago or so. I don't remember. I mean, I feel like that happens right. well, that's every how, episode. That's yeah. how it would have happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're getting it raw with us, people. That's right. <laughs> and on that raw note, um, shall we shall we end this? Yeah. All right. Well, Matt. It yeah. has been awesome. Buddy. Yes, thank you so like, much. It's been a pleasure. That was a lot of fun. I, I, we learned about you. We laughed. We cried. Sorry to bore you so much, Nate. It's well, trust me, we a, I don't think he was bored because of you. I think he's he's just this is just how he no, always is. He he hates us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If if it's we not about turns about and race cars, cars, he's just he's yeah. not into it. Yeah, I need um, to make more race car knives so we can get to the foreigner concerts on time. Yes. The the only question I wanted to ask that I didn't is, what uh, do you do? You carry your own knives? Matt, oh wow, that's a great question. No, things? I don't. <laughs> I carry no weapon. Uh, uh, well, well, what about a utility tool? Uh, no, nope. chill him. Are you so are you so deep in Seattle <laughs> culture that you? Uh, no, no. Consider knives weapons. No. <laughs> I just don't uh, I don't carry one on a daily basis. Never okay. have. Here's a hint, they're not that yeah. useful. <laughs> two, two two knife makers on this podcast, neither of whom carry knives. Cool. They, you know what they say uh, about the cobbler's children, you know. Yeah. I, I, I mean I, I used to carry a knife, but I work at home now. Now it's like There's knives everywhere. Yeah, I got shit everywhere. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. You have a Hey Brian, have you have are there any knives in your car yet? Do you have a car knife? Um, no. Oh, you well, should at least have a micro I in there. I still don't drive enough. I just, I, you research. Know, I, my wife told me the other day, she's like, you got to take that car out. It's, it's going to, same thing that's going to happen to this one as every other one. You're you going to have flat spots in the tires, you know. <laughs> you got to get a car chicane. Fuck you, I don't talk like that. <laughs> I don't talk like that. <laughs> you need a chicane for the car so you can be a, ra a real race driver. Yeah. Oh my God. Did, did you put your air freshener? That my wife gave you in there. The air freshener is in there. Very, very good. And how about the the uh, the T sixes? Did you break any yet? I didn't even use them yet. Tell you the truth. Nice. You're doing great. I love I haven't, you. I haven't put any knives together. I just started getting. I just started getting back to working on knives. Um, I guess we should mention before we leave, like why we're all throwing shade at Dave about detent stuff. We've been save we've that for the next that episode. For a while. I don't know. Yeah, we'll say we'll we'll, yeah. we'll save that for the next one. I had a bunch of knives that we didn't talk about. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> Matt, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the fuck is going on? You just stepped on the dog? Yeah. <laughs> and on uh, the that note <laughs> The dogs are fighting. You can uh check up please visit our website. We have some merch on there. Please buy stuff from us. <laughs> Yeah. Um, some new t-shirts are uh, coming out soon. Hopefully we'll have some patches out for you guys soon as well. Um, what else? Our coupon code on, uh, I, I haven't heard from our sponsor in quite a long time, but our coupon one. code still works. So if you go to, uh, tackleoutdoors.com and use the code knife nuts, you do get 10% off, which is pretty cool. Nice. Anybody, that, anything way you, else? that way you have some money for race car pots. Race car tires. <laughs> Chicanes. If Matt isn't back, we could I'm announce here. how to Okay. Yeah, sorry. How do people attack little dog? <laughs> how can people find you, Matt? <laughs> mm hmm Ooh. Come He's an elusive though. creature. <laughs> <laughs> he he doesn't want to be found. <laughs> people that are interested in purchasing carbon fiber or you're seeing your knives, maybe. Yeah, yeah, do you have a web do you have a website or anything, man? I do. I, I know. Uh, this would be the time where you try to roll out the carpet for you here. Yeah, yeah. you got to say what it is <laughs> Well, now. you can go to fibersmith.com. There's carbon fiber up there. Or, or you can not. Or you can just come see me at the Blade Show. There we go. There you go. There you go. Um, are yeah. you, uh, where are you in regards uh, in the Blade, in the, in the, uh, oh, we got a, at the show. <laughs> That's the thing with the tables. We got a big booth space. There's four booths. Mm-hmm. Wow. I share it with Chad Nichols. Nice. And uh, 
Jeremy Marsh is in there. Oh my goodness. And Bill and uh, Jim Burke. Wow. Wow. And George Palgonia, who sells titanium. One stop shop for the mat trails. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, we got a big booth and then we build a we erect a little uh truss, <laughs> hang lights. Shut up. So it's nice because people come see us. That's awesome. Well go see go see Matt, everyone. Well we'll yeah. come we'll come hang out with you for a while. My too. hologram yeah, will probably sure. be there. Or my proxy. <laughs> I got some yeah, new you're... screws too for sale. How exciting. That's probably the only thing I could afford at Blade. <laughs> yeah. Some screws. No, really I'm cool. going to pick up a, a, a Matt Diskin screw for you, Dave. Thanks. That's what I really want. Wait, wait are the screws work. 150 bucks? Where are they? They're damn steel pivot screws. Oh, oh I can't it, afford them. No, you're not no, getting, I can't you're not getting any pivots. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I had them made for other knife makers. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we don't, we don't, we don't f- fit into that category. No. What, what's a thread pitch? <laughs> 664. <laughs> That work? What is it? Three sixty four. Six sixty four. Six sixty four. Six sixty four. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Uh, so I also had some really good pivots made too, out of a free machining four forty. Oh, and they're uh, fifty eight Rockwell. Time to time to put a dent in that alpha knife supply market. Well, no. I just <laughs> I wanted to make these screws. I had to buy a whole bunch of damn steel for the minimum order. Mm. They make the stuff in a, a non hardenable pretty readily available but i wanted them hardenable so i had to buy 70 meters jeez wow. material oh and my god made a whole shitload of screws but they're really <laughs> good they're harder than any other pivot screws out there it's probably got to be a really satisfying thing if you make a really shit load of them and you put them in some sort of vessel and you just like scoop your hand in there it's like it steel is. pivots that's got to be pretty cool <laughs> I'm glad you understood what I was saying because I'm sure these assholes did it. Well, he he, he dives into them like uh, like Scrooge McDuck. Let's Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, Matt, Matt, Thank thank you very much for thank joining you. us, Matt. Thank and, you. Uh, I've been looking forward to this episode for a while, and I'm looking yeah. forward to. Uh, I don't know. I was been looking forward to Jake finishing that sentence. I was going to mention the copper pipes again. I figured it's getting played out at this. Point. It's a little played out. Wait, we'll, we'll wait for uh, Gavin Hawk to come on. Forward to making a new inside joke with you at Blade. Yes, at Dave's nice. expense, hopefully. Oh yeah, that's fine. And we'll be back. Hopefully, I think we're going to try and record another episode next week sure. or within the next couple of days with uh, the epic Snuggle Bunny. Yes, Austin. Hopefully, will be joining us. Let's just say he is joining us. He is joining us. I did confirm last oh. night. So okay, it is confirmed. Let's do it. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Wow. Later.